Hello, Kate Atherley here, and we're ready for another installment of my Wise Knit column. Doing something a little bit different this time. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that they're all about exploring the wonderful different ways of doing things in knitting, different ways to cast on, different ways to bind off, different ways to create all kinds of neat knitted fabrics. In this, we're going to explore three different ways of creating a fabric, but they're not all knitting. Have you seen the trinary, that fantastic shawl pattern that we have in the most recent issue? It's called trinary because it uses three different ways to create my favorite pattern stitch, the feather and fan. If you've worked feather and fan in knitting, you'll know that it's a classic foundational Shetland lace stitch pattern. It uses yarn overs to create these lovely holes, of course, and then it uses decreases. And what we've got, because it uses yarn overs in the center and decreases at the sides, it creates these gorgeous scallops. And you get this repeat here. Now Padma, our designer, was very clever. She realized that she could do the same thing, of course, in crochet. And again, that's a foundational crochet, crochet sort of stitch pattern, a feather and fan kind of scallop where you have yarn over increases. You can see them there and you do decreases. And in knitting where we might do a knit two together, in crochet, what we've got is a crochet two together. But this is the clever bit. Padma introduces Tunisian crochet. Now, Tunisian crochet, also known as Afghan stitch, is a technique that's this really cool midpoint between knitting and crochet. I'm going to show you how it works, but I just want to show you the fabric that results. So what we get is these same scallops. We've got yarn over increases and we have decreases to create that same scalloped edge. And just for extra fun, it's actually worked on the bias in the pattern too. So it looks a little messy right now because I'm mid row, I'm mid section here, and I've got some ends that I need to tidy up and weave in, and this hasn't really been blocked. But you can see, I wanted to leave it like this because you can see how the scallops all come together and how that fabric shape. So it's brilliant and I absolutely adore it. And then we have another. Tunisian crochet pattern in the current issue as well. It's a hat and it's really, these two together show you how wonderful the fabrics are that you can create with this technique. Let me demonstrate them for you. Let's talk about the tools you need for this because it is a crochet method, so you need a crochet hook, but it's not a normal crochet hook. You need a crochet hook with a cord. And I'm using a set here from Clover. It's a lovely, lovely set. It works like a set of interchangeable needles in that you've got different cord lengths. And, but in this case, you need a stopper. And the crochet hooks, they're fairly long. They, you have the cord and you have different cord lengths to attach. This is a really super set. I'm also in my demos, you're going to see me use a different hook as well. This comes from the Denise set of interchangeables. And the reason I'm using this big one is just because it's a nice big hook for the use of my chunky yarn. So two different interchangeable sets of Tunisian crochet hooks here. You can also get straight ones, which are just like the world's longest straight crochet hooks. You know, they can be 10 or 14 inches long, much like a knitting needle, but with a big old hook thing on the end. And chances are, you may have found one you, when you were going through a stash of old knitting needles. I know I did, and I was very puzzled by what it was. It looks like a single knitting needle, but it's got that hook on the end. Tunisian crochet, or indeed, as I say, our grandmas may well have known it as Afghan stitch, and they may well have used it to make Afghans.